Hey, Wagwan, it's Mr. Garfield here, and we're going to be looking at some multiple choice questions in the May June 2019 paper one. All right, and we're focusing on module one questions. Okay, so I have the first three questions up on the screen, and the first one says root 8 plus root 32 minus root 162 can be simplified as what? Now, by looking at this question, I know that I'm dealing with thirds here, right? Good. And based on my observation, eight, the numbers 8, 32, and 162 are even numbers, right? So that means that all of those numbers can be divisible by 2, right? All of those are divisible by 2. So that is my observation. So what I'm going to do here, all right, so I'm write it in blue. I know that eight is divisible by two, so eight can be written as two multiplied by four, okay? 32 can be written as two multiplied by 16, and 162 can be written as two multiplied by 81, okay? Good. So I'm going to just replace the numbers eight as two times four, the number 32 as two times 16, and the number 162 as the two times 81 under the root, okay? And with that being said, there is also a rule that you need to know in thirds, which says that the square root of A times B, right? If I have two numbers under the root and I'm multiplying them, I can write it as root A multiplied by root B, Right, where I'm just using A, all right? I'm just using A and B here to represent real numbers, okay? So I can say that the square root of eight is equal to the square root of two times four, right? So I'm replacing eight as two times four. And I know that if I'm multiplying two numbers under the root, I can split it up as root two, multiplied by root four, okay? Now I know that the square root of four can be written as two, and I have my root two remaining, okay? So I hope that was clear. Just now deal with the square root of 32. All right, so we're trying to simplify these thirds here. So the square root of 32, I can replace 32 now as the two times 16. And I can further write the root of two times 16 as root two multiplied by root 16, okay? And I know that the root of 16 is four and I have my root, all right? And now I'm going to deal with the root of 162, okay? So the root of 162, I know that I can rewrite 162 as two multiplied by 81, okay? And I can rewrite this now as root two multiplied by the root of 81, all right? Now the root of 81 can be written as nine and I have my root two remaining, okay? Good. Now they asked us, they asked us to simplify the root of eight, all right, the square root of eight plus the square root of 32 minus the square root of 162, all right? So this is now equal to, we know that the square root of eight is two root two, all right, which we calculated above. We know that the square root of 32 is four root two minus, we know that the root of 162 is nine root two, all right, good. So what I'm just going to do here is to just sum these numbers, right? I'm going to sum these numbers here and attach the root two to it. So two plus four minus nine, right, is going to give me a negative three, all right, and I have my root two. 
Okay, so negative three root two is the answer for this question, which is B. All right, that's B right here. Good. So we're finished with number one. Now let's move on to number two. Yes, so let us now move on to number two. It says, if a remainder of three is obtained when eight x cubed plus four x plus k is divided by x minus one, then k equals what? All right. Now it is important to note that we will be dealing with the remainder theorem here, right? We'll be dealing with the remainder theorem here. Okay, so you can do this question two ways. You can do you can do it using the remainder theorem, and you could also use long division, polynomial long division. Right? I'll be doing both ways, but I'll be doing the polynomial long division last. All right. So let us now look at it in terms of the in terms of the remainder theorem, all right? Okay. Just now look at it in terms of the remainder theorem. So let me scroll over to the right here. Okay. So they told us that when when 8x cubed plus 4x plus k is divided by x minus 1, then the remainder r is equal to 3. Okay? That is what they're telling us. All right? So what I'm going to do is to let the function f be equal to 8x cubed plus 4x plus k. All right? Good. And I'm now going to equate this linear expression here to zero. All right? So I'm going to say x minus 1 equals zero, which implies that x is equal to 1. Right? So I need to now substitute this 1 here into f of x. So basically what they're saying is that the remainder r, let me write it in red, the remainder r is equal to f of one is equal to three, right? That's basically what they're telling us. So f of one, substituting x as one, I will get eight times one cubed plus four times one plus k, all right? That is what I will get. And we know that f of one is three, okay? So let me scroll down a bit here. We know that f of one is three, and that is equal to eight times one cubed. Well, one cubed is one, multiplied by eight will give us eight, plus four times one will give us four, plus k. All right, good. And three is now equal to eight plus four is 12, all right, plus my constant k. Okay, I'm now going to take this 12 to the left-hand side of the equation. It will become a negative 12. So I can now say that 3 minus 12 is going to be equal to k. All right. So if I have 3 minus 12 be equal to k, it implies that k is equal to a negative 9, right? 3 minus 12 is a negative 9. Good. So my value for k here is negative 9, which is b. Right, so B is my answer here. Good. So that's one method of doing it. All right, one way of doing it. Let us do the other method, which is using polynomial long division. Let's write it here. So using polynomial long division. All right. I want to show you both ways so that you are accustomed to both methods, all right? So there's no one way of doing this problem. Okay, so my cubic was what? My cubic polynomial was 8x cubed 
all right? Plus 4x plus k, right? But remember, when I'm doing the long division, I, I have to put my x squared term, which is the 0x squared, all right? My x squared term plus the 4x, all right? Plus my constant k. Okay. Draw my line here. And we're dividing that polynomial there by x minus 1. All right? We're dividing it by x minus 1. Good. So you should be, you should already be accustomed to long division, right? You should already know that. So I'm not going to really explain the process of long division here, but let me just run through it, okay? So I need an x cubed here. I need an 8x cubed here. So in order to do that, I will have to divide 8x cubed by the x. I will get an 8x squared, all right, as my first term in my quotient. So 8x squared multiplied by x will give me an 8x cubed, all right? And 8x squared multiplied by a negative 1 will give me a negative 8x squared, OK? The next step from here is to now subtract, all right? So 8x cubed minus 8x cubed, of course, that is 0. 0x squared minus a negative 8x squared, that is really 0x squared plus 8x squared, which will give me 8x squared here. All right, now I'm going to bring down the positive 4x here and start the process again. So x into 8x squared will give me a plus 8x. All right, that's my second term in my quotient. So 8x multiplied by x will give me 8x squared and 8x multiplied by the negative one will give me a negative 8x, okay? The next step from here is to now subtract, all right? So 8x squared minus 8x squared, of course, that is 0. And 4x minus a negative 8x, that is what? 4x plus 8x will give me a positive 12x, all right? I'm now going to carry down this positive k, okay, and start the process again. So x into 12x will give me a positive 12. All right, that's gonna be the last term in my quotient. And 12 multiplied by the x will give me a 12x. 12 multiplied by a negative one will give me a negative 12. All right. And the next step from here now is to subtract. Good. And we know that 12x minus 12x will give us zero. And for the constants now, we're going to have k minus a negative 12, okay? That is what? k minus a negative 12 will give me a positive 12, okay? So we have k plus 12. And what is this? This here is my remainder, all right? k plus 12 is my remainder. And let's, let's go back to the question here. Remember I told us that, see I have it highlighted in yellow. It says we have a remainder of three when we divide it by X minus one, all right? So let me just write a statement here and say if, if R is equal to K plus 12, right? A remainder here is K plus 12. And they told us that the remainder must be equal to three when we divide it by x minus one, then I can now equate these two, right? So I can now say that k plus 12 is equal to three, okay? And the k is equal to three minus 12, right? So carrying the 12 to the right-hand side, I'll get a negative 12. And k is equal to three minus 12, that is a negative nine, right? Good. So you see that we still end up getting the same answer, negative nine, when we perform the polynomial long division. All right, good. So I'm glad that you have now been accustomed to both methods. Okay, and the final question that we'll be looking at is the inverse of P implies Q is what? What is that now? 
Well, you should know that Q implies P is known as the converse, is known as the converse of P implies Q, okay? And you should know that the negation of Q implies the negation of P is known as the contrapositive. All right, that is known as the contrapositive of the statement P implies Q, okay? P implies not Q, I don't know what that is, but that is not the inverse, okay? But this one here is the inverse. The negation of P implies the negation of Q, that is our inverse, all right? So my answer is D, okay? Good. So that is the end of these questions, right? That is the end, or those are the solutions, rather, of those three questions. All right, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please ensure to like up the video and comment down below. All right, I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.